Notice the connectors on the bigger ones. Those are called MC4 style connections. Then you just twist the wire you want to use around those. So with all of these, I use those. That's how I connect them. Just twist it on. I use this. It's just indoor extension cord wire. Cut off the plug in the outlet end and strip down the wire. By the way, these come off pretty easily. You just push this in and pull it. And it comes right out. And this one just has connections like that. And you just clamp the wires on or twist them on. I might have reversed the red and the black. I didn't look for the plus and minus signs, but just check that before you hook them up. That's a resolder like four or five times over the years. These smaller ones either don't have wire at all or they just have the red and black leads coming straight off of them. So these 100 waters, I mainly use these for uh, when I'm running like the 80 and 100 watt 12 volt radiator fans for some of my high end projects. Those things work great. I got the 50 recently for that too because those those 80 watt fans um, still run great. They run at medium speed using like a 50 watt panel. Easily runs that fan. It's only 10 watt. It could run five of these. Then I bought the 5 water because a lot of my solar air heaters, they use those computer case fans and those run anywhere from about 2 to 4 watts. Can one. Steel downspout. That's a 2 watt fan by the way. So a little 5 water will be good. Normally I'd been using these 15 waters but it's a bit big for the project. 5 water will do. 4 watt fan, 5 watt panel. And the 1.5 is just kind of an experimental deal. It'll run some of the small computer case fans too and some small LEDs and stuff. So one question that I get a lot with my projects is, how exactly do you hook these computer case fans to a solar panel? Well, it's pretty easy. Most of these have a large plug and a small plug. Some don't have the large, but it doesn't matter. If it does have the large, I just trim it down here, strip it, and then connect it by twisting it to the leads on the solar panel. 
It's just that easy. Nothing in between. If it doesn't have the big one, just use the small one. With this one, you can either put in two tiny pieces of wire and leave this intact, or just cut this off and strip it and use these. One thing to remember, some of them are all the same color like that though, so before you trim that off, make note of where the positive and negative is. The positive will be in the middle like that, the negative off to the right. That one was all black. This one was actually all clear. But just do that and you're set. And that's it. By the way, that's the same with like the water pumps like that, or the car radiator fan. You just twist them together. It's a straight connect. In a lot of cases, the item's not going to have the exposed leads. It'll actually come just with the plug. In that case, just buy one of these 12-volt sockets, plug it in, and use the clamps and hook those to the, the uh, wires on the solar panel. The other thing you can do with the ones that just have the exposed leads, you can buy one of these plugs, 12-volt plugs. Just twist it together, and then use a socket and plug it in. If you can't get one of these 12 volt sockets, you can always cut the plug off, strip it down, and just uh, twist it together, like I showed earlier. Then they sell lots of different things. If you want to run multiple items with plugs off of one panel, just buy a splitter like that. They have the, the twoers and the threeers, and I think you can even get up to fivers. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the solar panel size versus the wattage draw of the item. So a lot of people will ask, is it okay to hook up like a 2 to 4 watt item to a 100 watt solar panel? And the answer is absolutely yes. It just, the item itself just draws the power that it needs. Kind of like when you plug a nightlight or a microwave into the same AC outlet in your house. It just draws the power that it needs, but it doesn't damage the item. So it's the same with the solar panel and these. On the flip side, you don't need the full wattage to run something. Say with that fan, it's an 80 watt radiator fan. You don't need an 80 or 100 watt panel to run it. You can actually run it with a 50, a 30, a 20 watt panel, whatever you want. And it just proportionally runs the fans slower. Same with the water pumps and the computer case fans. It won't hurt them. Matter of fact, I just bought a 50 watt panel to run a lot of these 80 watt, 80 watt fans. Because that will run it at a medium to medium high speed, maybe two thirds power. They run 15 to 1700 CFM full. But I can get about 1000 CFM with a 50 watt panel. That allows me not to have to use one of these speed controllers. So as far as conversion efficiency, of course the, uh, the mono and the poly, they're pretty close. Mono's a little bit better. And then you go to the amorphous, not so much, meaning you've got to have a bigger panel for the same amount of power. But on the flip side, the amorphous ones like that are better in the shade. In other words, if you were to cover just one of those cells on any of these, you, you lose like 90% of the power of the cell. You cover a couple cells, like 95%. With this, it's proportional. So if you cover half the cell, you get half the power. You cover 10% of the cell, 10% of the power. So it's kind of cool. If you want to get, uh, say, 5 watts, just take a towel, lay it over it, and cover two-thirds of it. So it's very proportional like that. Again, these aren't. You cover one cell, it wrecks the whole panel output. But as far as like a cloudy day, if it's an evenly cloudy day, so it's like, say, overcast but high indirect light, these work okay. They're proportional in that way, but all cells have to be getting the same amount of sun, even if it's just a little bit.